Hi, Josh here. I'm going to try and do something a little different this time in the form of a mostly unscripted design exploration, or at least a point in the design process for some updated legs for the Quad A1. Um, the current legs for the Quad A1 are composed of a few parts. Uh, the first is this upper leg, and there's a lower leg, which is three separate parts, a 3D printed part, another 3D printed part, and a squash ball with foam. There's a pulley that goes, attaches into the lower leg, slides into the notch. Um, there is a, a upper pulley which goes onto the QDD100 and then fits into the motor. And then also there is a, a an axle. I'll pull out an axle here. There's an axle that goes in the center of that lower leg pulley, which is just a machined aluminum bracket. And this lower leg, the leg for the Quad A1 works. Um, it doesn't break very often, and it's able to. I've you can put dozens to a hundred hours without breaking if you're uh, careful with using it. Um, but there are a number of things I'd like to address going forward. One is that uh, it's hard. It takes a lot of manpower to make. Um, the prints are all printed in orientations to maintain their structural integrity. I mean, this is the, the challenge with the Quad A1, which is trying to do all the mechanically uh, mechanical components as 3D printing, means that you have to pay close attention to the material properties and the properties of the resulting prints in order for them to survive uh, loading. I mean, the Quad A1 can run at two and a half meters a second, it can jump in the air, it can move around pretty quickly, and all the while these uh, plastic parts with lamination lines have to not fall apart. And so oftentimes the prints are designed, they're printed in obnoxious orientations that require a fair amount of support in order to get the layer lines going the right way or to minimize support where it's, uh, it would be impossible to remove. Um, and so for this upper leg, for instance, it's printed in this orientation. It has a bunch of support in the middle. It's able to, it's printed in one piece and it's able to bridge. So there's no need for support on the inside, thankfully, um, which works out all right. There's, it still takes a moderate amount of time to remove all the support from the bottom. The, the support always especially if you want to make it look nice and get the final interface layer off. It takes a modern amount of whittling with a pocket knife. Um, there's also a, a bearing interface in here. Since it's printed in an upright orientation, the circular bearing interface is never quite perfect, and so you, you have to whittle that to get the bearing to be a snug fit inside as well. Um, the lower leg is comes right off the printer like this, and the final assembled version looks like this with the foot. Um, the lower leg, I cheated here, and with this design, there had, um, when I was initially printing in PET G, which is what most of the parts of the Quad A1 are, the lower leg still had failures down here at the narrow point, and that it would snap off um, after with uh, strong loads or just from fatigue. And so rather than actually redesign the uh, foot to joint interface, I just switched the printing material to PC Blend, which is a, a polycarbonate variant from Prusa, Prusa, Prusa Mint's line. And that resolved the failures at the expense of having to print this unusually shaped part in this orientation with PC Blend, which is a very challenging print to do. PC Blend tends to warp a lot, and so with uh, basic, you e have the problem of either it doesn't stick at all to the plate, or it sticks but the part up here that's narrower and smaller peels up and warps part way through, which results in the print being a, a curved shape, um, or it sticks permanently to your build plate and you lose the build plate. Uh, and so this is a, a challenging print to do, 
and the post process isn't really bad because there's only a tiny bit of support here and under the the foot joint but it's often the case that I have like a 50% yield success rate on printing and burn through a lot of, uh, or can easily burn through print plates um, achieving it. The other printed parts are not particularly hard or challenging. The, this lower pulley one goes in the lower leg. Um, and because it, it's the leg is printed in this orientation, the pulley has to be a separate part that can be printed in the natural orientation of flat. And it just, it has a, M3 3D printed inserts on both sides, which slide in, and then you bolt those in before inserting the the bearings here. Um, the upper pulley is also printed in the natural orientation, and then it's just this is an older version, but um, it's then bolted onto the QD100. So this print is a totally fine one as well. It has a another bearing interface which captures between in this one and the upper pulley, upper leg so that it fits in like that. Um, so the big annoyance is here having to print this in PC blend. Also the overall leg size is less than I would like for the size of the quad A1. It ideally be a little bit longer however given that this was failing already I didn't make sense to make it longer because it would just be more likely to fail. Um, and so what I wanted to do was rev the leg so that it is uh, requires less support removal for all the pieces so that I don't have to print this lower leg in polycarbonate blend and to at least have the op or possibly uh, decrease the effort required to do this bottom foot joint which is currently has foam cast into a separate piece which is then epoxied onto here and so that's actually the other big improvement is being able to change the foot without having to change the whole lower leg um, currently assembling the lower leg is another pain point um, once you have the belt installed so you assemble it by sliding a belt through by sliding a timing belt through the upper leg bolting that onto the servo like so and then you the pulley is mounted through the lower leg with the pulley bolted in wherever I put that pulley somewhere here and then you have to pre-tension the belt and pull and try to attach the bolts through the axle which is a, a, another very precarious operation um, the bolts are small they're hard to see and you, when the belt is new, you have to do a lot of pretensioning, which can be really hard to keep the bolt holes aligned while you're pretensioning and trying to operate the bolt. So that's another improvement for assembly that I wanted to, to make because the assembly part of that was taking a long time. So this is somewhat about function, but most the revisions are mostly about improving the assembly time, the effort required to assemble, and the effort required to get the prints done. And what I've done is I might switch here to showing some uh, intermix with some B-roll to show some catting. But I've changed the, or I'm trying something with a different design concept um, where the upper leg is printed in two parts. A lower part, which can be printed in the natural orientation um, which means flat like this, so no support whatsoever is required. Um, and it has interior features with a f this one will need in total four heat set inserts. And then there's a top half, which can also be printed in the natural orientation, so no supports are required. And it will bolt on, it has some, uh, snug fits to snap it in place and then it will also bolt on those four places and the uh, this top part attaches to the QDD100 three points which are done while with the top half off and the other one two three four five are done bolt attaching through the top half um, I shouldn't say there's no support on the top there is a little bit of support 
to maintain the countersinks for the bolts because um, those are round which um, printed in this orientation requires some small support or you get dangling bits around where the countersinks go. We'll see it doesn't take a whole lot of those are those supports are pretty trivial to remove. Um, so that's the upper leg. There's this, the same concept of having an upper pulley which um, that's another change. The old upper pulley ended up being printed in two pieces, an adapter plate, which uh, bolted to the QD100, and then eight uh, M3 dowel pins, which the actual pulley bolted onto. And that was to permit pulley sizes that were uh, would otherwise impinge on the mounting bolts of the QD100. But I've since that design was made, switch the pulley size to be small enough such that it can be a one-piece part. Um, and so this will fit on the QDD100 and there is just enough room with an 18 tooth pulley to fit the bolts in to attach it to the QDD100. So now only a one-piece pulley part is needed which saves more assembly steps and prints and the heavy dowel pins. So this pulley bolts on the QDD100 and then this will fit in here. I haven't actually, this is the first time I've fit all these, piece, these pieces together. Uh, this is like the third or fourth print of the leg parts only because I was trying to get them to fit it all together. But with this, it fits together like that. And then the, the pulley would go on for assembly order. And then the upper leg goes on. And I'll try putting this together here in a little bit and taking the support off to see how it goes. And so this upper leg goes like so. I also took this uh, chance to make the leg a little bit more stylish so it has a slight curve to it and it's a little bit longer. So that's the upper leg. The lower leg concept is also different. It is printed in two parts, which the old leg was printed in two parts, you counted the pulley, but these two parts, one part has the pulley integrated and is printed in the natural orientation uh, with some support to manage a bearing interface. That's the only support here is there's a bearing interface that I wanted to not have dangling parts down so the bearing will press in. Um, and so it has uh, bottom and then a top cap, which is also printed in the natural orientation with some support for the same bearing interface and support for bolt holes. And this will snap on, and then on the bottom part, there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six heat set inserts, which this will bolt to. Um, the part that is the, well, there are two parts for this. The Pull, a couple parts. The pulley has to transmit the entire force of jumping, even jumping on two legs, which means there might be uh, 20 kilos of force on this pulley, which is why there are four bolts with the heat set inserts, which can transmit a significant amount of torque. Um, and on this top piece, there's also some f uh, flanges which mate to transmit torque, as well as currently two more uh, three heat set inserts with bolts. And there may need to be more than that to transmit the torque proper or effectively without breaking. We'll see once we put it under load. The part which is the hardest is on the lower leg is getting the foot so that it can be replaceable but still transmit torque and still be 3D printed. And this is just the current incarnation and it's likely to fail and we'll have to tweak it. But what I have now is the bottom of the uh, lower leg has a geometry which looks like that and a slight hole on the inside and the foot for now is going to use the same squash ball but with it detachable it's easier to change independently so a squash ball will uh, either glue like this or I can change this to have a protrusion to go into the center of the squash ball if I want to fill the squash ball with foam as before and this has a mating geometry with a small protrusion here. And the way this will likely fail is shearing off at the Z layer line where all these mating parts jut up at. 
Um, and so what I tried to do was to get as much plastic as possible. So this is a, a solid infill part. Um, and so that Z layer line has both the one, two, three, four, five protruding features, which all mate in transmit torque, as well as it being a solid layer line. And I'll ha this is something I'll have to see. And it may be that this print will have to be redone in this orientation, which will probably necessitate some redrawing of it in order to um, avoid that Z layer line sheer failure mode, which is, I'm hopeful that it won't be a problem, but it might be a problem. Um, the other alternatives are to make this part out of an injection or a, a non 3D printed manufacturing technique. So I could either machine a piece of plastic, machine it out of aluminum or injection mold it, all of which wouldn't have that uh, Z layer line shearing failure mode. But this um, slides into there and then there are just going to be two heat set inserts with bolts which attach the foot. And so that way, if this is able to work, you can switch out the foot, which is a wear item, the, the balls or whatever um, a mechanism you use, even if it's a TPU or a silicone, those will wear as you run around, and so you need to replace them semi-frequently. And I want to be able to do that without having to take the whole foot apart, or the whole leg apart. And so that's what the uh, lower leg looks like. Now I'm going to take a stab at removing the support from this and attempting to bolt everything together. Well, I won't bolt, every, I don't have all the hardware to bolt everything together, or the axle. But I will take the support off of this to show what that looks like. Um, and so there are only, I said only a few things with support. Um, the top of the upper leg has support around the all the bolt holes for the countersinks. And I suppose if I wanted to have the bolts just sticking out, either I use a socket cap or uh, just let them stick out, I could get rid of that support. But for now, I'll leave it there. But it doesn't, each one of those, oftentimes they just pop out straight up without having to fiddle. Just one, two, three. doing this I will mention all these parts are printed with settings designed to be as fast as possible and so even if they fail in this incarnation I can trivially change the infill or the number of perimeters to get or do variable infill at different points to try to improve the strength which is actually something that this old lower leg did as well the, the very bottom of this is solid and it switches to a less dense infill near the top. And between polycarbonate and being solid at the bottom, that resolved the uh, um, failures at that point. And so a lot of these, if there are failures, the, we can address them by changing the, the 3D printing parameters rather than the mechanical design. And so there, that's the... all the support from that top piece. Um, this bottom piece has no support. Here's the cap for the lower leg. It has the support around these um, countersinks and the bearing interface. One countersink. But he supported one, so we'll see how challenging it is. I'll probably use a pair of pliers to begin with. 
this. This is more annoying than I expected. It looks like it will produce a usable finish. The challenge with the bearing ones is to make sure that the bearing can be a snug fit and that it goes in the proper depth, which can be tough with support because support leaves such a uh, rough finish on the, at the interface layer. But it typically isn't a problem around the perimeter of where there's a filled region. And it's not too bad if the bearing sticks out a little bit too far. That can just we can just add a little bit of extra tolerance stack up to the overall width of the leg. Alright, so that looks good. Um, I've designed this to use the same bearing for the upper and lower leg so I can see if this bearing will fit in. Um, Looks like I might need to put a little bit more. Oh no, it fits in. Um, and so one of the goals with the bearing fits, it, you certainly don't want the bearing to um, it impinge on the bearing's ability to rotate freely. With the 3D printing bearing fits, you really just have to kind of fudge it based on your printer. Um, all these are designed for the, the Prusa Mark III, which I uh, take the bearing outer diameter and then add a, some 100 microns or 150 microns until the print comes out such that the, the bearings will fit snugly in. Um, and it's different if you need a different fudge factor if you're printing the bearing in the um, vertical orientation as opposed to the natural orientation just because the um, reproduction of the circle is less accurate. So you typically need it a bit bigger, but this looks like it worked fine. So now we'll do the, and that got all four um, countersinks as well. Oh no, just two more countersinks here. I guess another change I'm trying to make in this leg is to the old Quad A1 leg used exclusively, well not exclusively, almost all the hardware was M3 low profile hex bolts. And the low profile was really used to design artifact because I had used that in some previous work and had a lot of them around. But the low profile versions have only an M2 hex head in them, which is relatively prone to stripping with the Torx um, required to perform this assembly. And so by switching, I want to switch to standard profile, which are have a th thicker head, but also use an M2.5 driver. And the M2.5 driver will, it can put out enough torque to uh, shear the bolt before the, the head will strip, which means that will no longer be a problem. So there's the cap of the upper leg, and then we'll do the or cap of the lower leg. And then the lower leg, the only support it has, this geometry on the bottom is designed to have, um, to not need support by virtue of the only part, place that could, I might change my mind on this is around the hole where the heat set insert mounts into, it has to uh, go across. And I guess I could make, right now, since it's a circle there, it can't quite bridge it all the way across, and so there's a little bit of gunk that dangles down. That's not a big problem. But the rest of this is designed with a, a 45 degree slopes, which means no support is required for that part. Um, similarly for here, no support is required because all these are 45 degree slopes. The only support here is that bearing interface, which is a mirror of the bearing interface on the other, the top half of the leg. Um, it's probably because of the, the support interface layer 
really screws with the calculations because it's hard to get it all the way clear of support of the interface layer. And then it makes the bearings stick out further than they should. So that is something that will probably have to be fixed in CAD to add a little bit of extra margin so that you don't have to spend forever cleaning the interface layer out. It's better. And so then this will fit here. We'll install these heat set inserts in this same phase here just so I can have one mostly assembled. Um, let's do that. I'll do that in the. We can do that now. Install the heat set inserts. I'll just move the soldering iron. So for the heat set inserts. A lot of these designs, I have used the heat set insert method of assembly. The heat set inserts are extremely strong. They can hold up to a lot of the, the 3D print will destroy itself long before the inserts do. And with a minor trick, they're trivial to assemble perfectly aligned every time. And that minor trick is to use a small flat uh, block of metal. In this case, I have a small, piece of scrap aluminum extrusion. And what you do is I take an iron with a tip that is um, just a regular soldering iron tip and it's such that it will, I pick a size for whatever insert is. So this is the size I have for the M3 insert. And you set the insert on the workpiece Put the iron on it until, and just gently push down until the insert is maybe uh, 200 microns or so above the surface. And then you take the flat piece of metal and squish it down the rest of the way, um, which aligns, assuming that the insert's into a flat surface, it aligns the insert with the piece, as well as uh, squishing flat any extra material that would otherwise ridge up around the edge. And so the result is a perfectly smooth, flat meeting surface that's very well aligned axially with the um, plastic part. And so this, you can put in a lot of inserts pretty quickly. I mean, it still takes manual effort, but They go pretty fast. So that's that one, and then there are six needed here. Or, no, eight. So we put. So those are the inserts. So this will lower leg will fit in and bolt on. I should just put those inserts down a bit more. The other part of this, or another part, is the axle. I'm going to try doing a s similar. Where do I have? I thought I had an axle here. I had a 3D printed mock up of the axle, which has gone missing somewhere. But the previous axle was this piece that had three 2.5 bolts in it, which had to be screwed in. And like I said, it was very tough to get it aligned and tensioned. My, t my goal for this time is to use a s cylinder with a single M4 bolt in the middle of it, and then use these caps that um, 
will distribute the load from the axle to the 3D printed part over a much larger area. And so the axle will be coming through and this cap will fit into the 3D printed part and on and then the axle will fit inside of that. So the the 3D printed part should be fine in this application because the axle is pushing, just pushing between the plastic and more plastic. Um, and so this part can be 3D printed. The axle will still need to be uh, aluminum because it, there's no way to print that without it it's shearing. There's a lot of tension on the belt and it pulls pretty hard. Um, and so those are the final steps to do this leg, which I'll show in another video where I make the axle and then bolt everything together and move and drive it on a leg. Now this is also only the, this omits the upper two motors of the leg, which also I'm going to make changes to, and I'll cover those later as well. Um, some of those, especially the shoulder joint, required an immense amount of post-processing to remove the support material. And that's something that I also want to address um, in this revision. So that's what I've got for now. If you like this video, click subscribe, click like. I'll be showing right in the comments section uh, your ideas, what you think. And if this format uh, works out, I'll do more videos like this that are more free form and stream of consciousness. Thanks for watching.